Lord of the Rings, but make it Star Wars. Okay gang, let's workshop this. So, how do we combine two of the most iconic fantasy aesthetics of all time without it looking like trash? Like, what's iconically Lord of the Rings, but also iconically Star Wars? Is this even possible? Have I in fact wasted the better part of a year just thinking about this? Yes, Edgar. That's obvious, the best costume in Lord of the Rings is Arwen's riding dress. I mean, I guess if you were going to take that and then you... For speed, I decided to use one of my favourite patterns, this coat from McCall's, which is definitely not just a rip-off of the costumes from Once Upon a Time. And then for the opposite of speed, I decided to attempt to reduce the bust shaping so it would fit me better in the chest. Spoilers! I did not do this right. I'm not even sure at what point I did it wrong, but it seemed to mostly work out, so eh? I'm definitely not in a position to be giving pattern drafting advice, but I will share some tutorials that I found useful and are probably pretty great if you actually follow their instructions. Anyway, I ended up with new front pattern pieces and proceeded to cut out the bodice, collar and upper sleeve pieces. I bought 10 meters of this extremely cheap blue crepe lining material and a further 6 meters, I think it might have been 8, don't remember, of the same fabric in white, plus leftover linen from another project for the lining. Arwen's riding costume has the most amazing sleeves, and the only way I could sensibly translate this into something more Star Wars-esque was to make even more sleeve. So I cut two circles the full width of the fabric out of both the blue and the white, and the remaining yardage went into the skirt. I 
I think it was four half circles in the blue and quarter circles of the white. There was a little bit of fussing around to make the shapes as big as possible while still fitting on the fabric and, you know, not being longer than my waist to the ground. At which point the project stalled because I suddenly had meters and meters of bias cut edges and no good ideas about how I was going to finish all of these. All my normal hemming methods were coming out too stiff and heavy for a costume that was supposed to be mostly movement and there was just so much hem. What now? What kind of fabric is that? It's polyester. Are you sure? Yeah, it said it was polyester on the website. Okay, but have you checked? Why would I... Oh. It's polyester. Yeah, thanks. I, I did actually... Wait a minute. So in short, I spent a whole afternoon melting all the raw edges of my skirt and sleeve pieces. While this creates a very fine edge with the right mix of stiffness and movement for what I wanted, there were occasional mishaps where the fabric caught and I melted slightly more than I had intended. For the Star Wars aesthetic that tends to be heavily weathered, I thought this was probably fine, but if you're working on some kind of delicate precision piece, maybe don't do this with a lit candle. I have since seen people working with soldering irons, pyrography tools, and heated stencil cutters to do fine melted edges, and I think next time I will give that a try. The sleeves still need a little finessing, so I marked out whether I wanted the upper sleeve to join the full circle, white stacked on top of blue, and then had to somehow wrangle sewing a straight cut in the middle of a piece of fabric into a sleeve tube while also sandwiching the seam allowances between the sleeve and the sleeve lining. Lots of pins and sewing very slowly, somehow it worked out. The collar, finished sleeves and skirt pieces, blue stacked on top of white, were sewn to the bodice lining. I did this so that all the sleeve allowances could be pressed into place on the outside of the relatively robust linen lining. Remember that this is the best part of 16 meters of fabric, it's not light. And the bodice outer, which was made of the more delicate crepe lining material, could be sewn over the top, covering all the raw edges and even enclosing the front closures. These hooks and eyes set into the front edge. I have a shirt with this finish on it and I've been dying to try it in a sewing project for years. And that's the main part of the costume finished. Now all it needs are some finishing touches.
Despite how long it took me to actually finish it, I'm really happy with how this costume came out. I mean, look at it. I typically do a lot of detail work on costumes, trims and ruffles and patterned fabrics, so it was a welcome change to take on something that focused on clean lines and delicate simplicity. Let me know in the comments what your favourite Lord of the Rings or Star Wars costume is and how you'd reimagine it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Appease the YouTube Gods, follow me on Instagram, and in the description box there's a link to my Ko-fi if you'd like to make a one-off donation to support this channel and the Rebel Alliance. Dream big, and I'll see you next time.